Hey everybody, it's Ron from Ron's Basement. Thank you for joining me. Today is July 9th, 2021. It has been a painful, horrible, disgusting, humiliating, um, depressing week to be invested in precious metals, but in particular precious metals mining stocks. Uh, I can assure you if you're feeling some pain, some nervousness, um, you uh, don't want to go walking over any high bridges, uh, that I am with you and I feel your pain. But um, it looked like this morning possibly things were looking a little better. I just, I can't even look at it anymore. The real point to this video is I got, I got kind of feeling passionate about this again this morning. I was at my daughter's swim practice watching their swimming, focused on them in the pool, and the price of gold and the gold market slipped into my mind. And I, I kind of get a little irritated sometimes because I hear and I read so many articles about the price of gold and the dollar, you know, that the dollar is this like king uh, uh, influencer in regards to the price of gold. The dollar's up, the price of gold goes down. The dollar's down, the price of gold goes up. And it's true. I mean, it does have a short-term influence. But, and this is key, and if I'm wrong, you tell me I'm wrong, but I think I'm right about this. This is key. The value, the fluctuations in the price of, do of the dollar, that's kind of like in a river. Like, I live here in St. Louis. We have the Mississippi River. It's kind of like the little ripples on the water of the river, right? The little ripples will, if you're in a canoe, if you're in the gold canoe going down the river, the little ripples will affect the canoe. And maybe there's some little waves even on the surface of the water. But what really influences the gold canoe, a.k.a. the price of gold, is the overall current and flow, the underlying flow of the river. And to me, when it comes to the price of gold, that underlying flow is not temporary fluctuations in the price of the dollar. That underlying flow is the fact that all the major currencies of the world are simultaneously... Remember that, simultaneously devaluing themselves. The euro, the yen, the yuan, the Mexican peso, the Canadian dollar, the U.S. dollar, and there's many, 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 many more. They're all printing huge amounts of money, okay? And so when that happens, if they all simultaneously print money, the value of the currencies kind of relative to one another will remain relatively static. Sure, there'll be some fluctuations, there'll be some little ripples in the surface, but the underlying fact that they're all creating more money out of thin air, what that means is that eventually all that created money is going to result in inflation and higher prices for things like, oh, lumber, copper, uh, food, um, real estate, and gold, although gold has been kind of, a lot of people say, artificially held down. But you can't stop the flow of a river, right? You can dam it up temporarily, no doubt about it. You can kind of manage it. But in the end, Mother Nature wins. And right now, when it comes to the value of gold, Mother Nature is this powerful force that everyone in the world is printing money simultaneously. Uh, some good analogies, right? So like, you know, so the dollar uh, is like the best looking horse in the glue factory. Um, if the euro is temporarily strong, well, the euro is the best car in the junkyard, in the salvage yard, where people take their cars to, to die, right? So people can try to salvage a few old pieces off of it. Um, Another analogy, and this is the one that came to me this morning, which seemed brilliant at the time, but maybe isn't quite as clear right now, is, you know, if, if the world currencies were a neighborhood, um, so you had a neighborhood and there was the euro house and the dollar house and the, the yuan house and the yen house, every currency was their own little house in this neighborhood. It'd be like driving into that neighborhood and they're, all the houses are on fire. Uh, all the houses are in big trouble. But... Maybe the dollar house is a little bit less on fire. Um, so 
that's my thought. I think there's a big, I think there's too much emphasis. And again, I, I do know that, yeah, the value of the dollar does on a short-term temporary basis affect the price of gold. But if everybody simultaneously is devaluing their currencies, like if everybody doubles the amount of money supply, um, where's that money going to go? It makes prices go up. Okay. And that's what's happening now. And you can't, you know, you can manage the strong flow of that river temporarily, but in the long run, in the long run, the value of hard assets is has to increase. I mean, what if they, what if all the major uh, currencies, fiat currencies of the world decided to 10 times the amount of money they had, right? Are you going to tell me that prices wouldn't, there wouldn't be hyperinflation? No. So if they go up by 30 or 40%, there's got to be a flow through of inflation because there's just not uh, an increase in productivity in the underlying economies to justify that increased inflation. I'm sorry I went on so long. I appreciate you listening. If I'm wrong on this, please let me know. Hope you have a great weekend and uh, hopefully the precious metals mining sector will do a little better for us in the near future. Thanks for watching.